Hello, hi, a very, very happy good evening. So this is Krishna Vaini. We're talking about the story of life on Earth, and that's biology. I'm really sorry for being late. So I know I'm pretty late. I'm 10 minutes late. I'm sorry for the inconvenience. Uh, it's due to a technical glitch. But so here we are in the final revision. So today we're going to talk about the animal kingdom. So I agree, animal kingdom is pretty a huge chapter that we cannot easily finish. But we'll try our best to finish it in one go. So I'm just going to explain the important topics to you. So not uh, everything that we're going to discuss we want to discuss only what is necessary right i'm so sorry if once again i regret the inconvenience that was caused so now we move forward and quickly finish off animal kingdom to the point very precise we'll be talking right yes so here we go about animal kingdom so when you talk about animal kingdom you have these 11 phyla so the kingdom is animalia under that you have phyla so you have 11 phyla right so you have porphyra you have coelenterata you have tenophora you have platyhelminthes you have ascii helminthes Anilida, Orthopoda, Mollusca, Echinodermata, Hemichordata and Chordatum. So we are going to talk about all these phylas, no doubt, right? But this is a very easy way to remember all the phylas, I'll tell you the trick, right? So before we dwell into each of these phylas, you have to understand the fundamental features on which we have classified them. So we have these six points on which it was classified the level of organization so whether it it has your cell level organization tissue level organization organ level or organ system level right so the symmetry what kind of symmetry it has so it has your bilateral symmetry it can have radial symmetry so bilateral symmetry gives you equal right and left half radial symmetry gives you two equal halves and then otherwise it can be your asymmetry right so triploblastic or diploblastic so diploblastic means two and triploblastic is three when it has all the three embryonic germ layers that is ectoderm mesoderm and endoderm it is triploblastic so three things it is triploblastic if you have only ectoderm and endoderm it is diploblastic in that case you have what is called this mesoglia that is undifferentiated mesoderm so jay prakash hello hi a very very happy good evening thank you so much for joining my session today so please do like share and subscribe right so what is coelom so coelom is the gut cavity so if the particular organism has the coelom it is coelomate so otherwise it is acoelomate or it can also be your pseudo coelomate So segmentation, whether it has the body is divided into segments and along with segmentation, it can also have metamerism, right? So metamerism is repetition of organs. So that is metamerism. So yeah, that is mentioned here. So the last one can be your notochord, the presence of notochord. So notochord is only present in chordates. So based on notochord, it can be differentiated into chordates or non-chordates, right? So for every particular phyla, we are going to talk about these things, right? So let's move forward. The first one is phylum porphyrum. So you have three examples in porphyrum. So with your animal kingdom, the one most important thing are your examples, right? So this is an example of your a finger sponge that is skyphon right so this is your bath sponge so this is your eb right so this is used as your uh, scrubber when you bath so this is your u spongia then the last one is a freshwater sponge so this is spongula so i want you to remember the example so apart from that when you talk about the first uh, the six points here so the level of organization here is cell level it is not even tissue level so it is diploblastic it is acoelomate 
so it is asymmetric so it is not segmented it has no notochord so very basic development ma'am everything is no here so what we have to remember so here you have to remember that it has a water canal system so this water canal system has three parts one is the pores that is ostea the other one is the cavity that is your spongocele and then you have the osculum right so these are the three parts and your spongocele has cells that is called as the collar cells so this is all that you have to remember with respect to your sponge they also have skeletons that is called the spicules or your spongin fibers so these are the two points that i want you to remember so we go to the next phylum that is coelenterata which is also known as cnidarians they are called as cnidarians because they have cnidoplast in their tentacles right the stinging cells so they can have be of two forms one is the polyp form the other is the medusa form so the polyp form is sessile it is fixed to the ground the medusa form is moving right so uh, there are various examples in this but here you if you want to talk about the various levels of organization here so let me write it here so these are the examples of your coelenterata so but they are tissue level organization they are still diploblast so they have radial symmetry so they are also acelomate they do not have a coelom they are also not segmented right and of course they have no notochord because they are non chordates so what is you should remember here you should remember why they are called as cnidoblast or cnidarians and the other thing that you have to re uh, remember here is that they have a gastrovascular cavity right so this is your portuguese man of war so this is your physalia so this is your sea anemone so this is your sea anemone so this is your sea pen that is this is your sea fan that is gorgonia and the last one is your brain coral so these are the examples the examples are very important and there's one more term that you have to remember here that is metagenesis so when they can alter between the two stages that is polyp and medusa right so the next cousin here is your uh, tenophora right so this is how your tenophora looks and there are only two examples one is tenophora uh, tenoplana the other one is pleurobrachia so here they are again cell level uh, so they are tissue level organization they are diploblastic they are acelomate so they have radial symmetry no segmentation and they have no notochord so they are also known as your comb jellies or sea walnuts they are called as comb jellies or sea walnuts right so what is more significant about them is that they are bioluminescent so if you can see the picture even in the dark they are able to eliminate light right so this is the bioluminescent property so they have pleurobrachia and tenoplana as the example so here comes the next one that is your platyhelminthes so they are usually very flat so that is why it is called as platyhelminthes all right so this has your bilateral symmetry so from radial symmetry we have moved into bilateral symmetry so henceforth all the phyla will have your bilateral symmetry fine yes so they have organ level so from tissue level we have moved into upgraded ourselves into organ level so of course they we have moved from triploblastic diploblastic to triploblastic but they are still acelomate so they have hooks and suckers so since they have organ level there is some organ present here so it can be your excretory system anything so here they have flame cells for osmoregulation the flame cells are also known as your solenocytes 
sides. Right? So, here you have two examples that is tamia and the liver fluke that is fasciola. So, this is about your plati helmetus. Going to the next one that is ascii helmetus. So, we have moved from organ level to organ system level here. So, the previous one itself was triploblastic. This was also triploblastic. But the previous one was acelomate, but this is pseudocelomate. So, this is the only phyla in your animal kingdom that is having pseudocelomate. Fine? Yes. So, this has your bilateral symmetry. So, everything further will have your bilateral symmetry, right? Hi, W. Yes, a very, very happy good evening. Thank you so much for joining my session. So, please do like, share and subscribe. Right? Yes, pseudo means false. You're right. So, they are having bilateral symmetry. So, here they have well developed muscular pharynx. So, that is also a unique feature. And just like the platy helmetus had flame cells for excretion, these people have excretory tube for excretion. Right? So, the examples are Ascaris, Wusheria, and Ion Cyclostoma. Right? Okay. So now talking about phylum Anilida, the next one. So we have moved into organ system. So henceforth everything will be organ system, right? So everything will be triploblastic, bilateral symmetry. Now hence from your Anilida, everything is your coelomate, right? They also have segments. So that is also positive. So only notochord is absent here. So, aquatic annelids, they have a structure for movement that is parapodia. Example of aquatic annelid is nerespis. Their circulatory system is closed like ours. So, so closed circulatory system have well developed blood vessels, right? So, for excretion, they have nephridia, they have your pad ganglia, etc. So, your nerysis is the aquatic annelid and your earthworm is a terrestrial annelid. So, they can be both hermaphrodite as well as dioecious being. So, this is what you should remember. So, moving to the next and the largest phyla in your animal kingdom, that is orthopoda, right? So, they are bilateral symmetry, they have organ system level, they are triploblastic, they are coelomate, they are segmented, they have metamedism, only thing is that they have no notochord. So, the body is segmented into head, thorax and abdomen. They are called orthopoda because they have joint appendages for movement, meaning these organisms can move and they have a structure for movement. So, the body surface is brown in color. If you remember cockroach, that is because of the chitinous exoskeleton. So, the respiration here is the organs can have gills, the organs can be gills, it can be book lungs etc but here the circulatory system is open so i hope you'll be able to correlate with the circulatory system of cockroach right yes so they have malpigian tubules for excretion so apart from that they have antenna eyes statostis and balancing organs as the sense organ right so you also have five classes under your phylum orthopoda so please pay attention so it is kingdom animalia Right? So, it is phylum orthopoda. Right? So, it has class. It has five classes. The first one is your arachinid. Sorry, it's the crustaceans. You have the diplopoda. Then you have the Chilopoda, you have the Insecta or, sorry, Insecta and the Arachinida. So these are the six classes, right? So I want you to remember these six classes. So we go to the next one that is Molluscus, the second largest phylum, organ system triploblastic, bilateral symmetry, coelomate, they are segmented and they also, they do not have notochord here, right? Yes. So, they have a calcareous cell. So, the body is divided into head, foot and a hum. So, if this is the hum, there is a layer over the hum that is the mantle, right? So, the space between the hump and the mantle is called as a mantle cavity. 
so here in mollusca you have to remember what is radula so it is a rasping organ it is a mouth like organ right so this you have to remember and then you have a examples here so here you should remember though the term is cuttlefish it does not come under fish it comes under the molluscus right so these are some of the points that you have to pay attention so apple snail pearl oyster cuttlefish squid octopus this is your sea hare so this is your chitin this is your tusk shell and this is your chitin right yes so next we come to echinodermata so echinodermata have spines on their body so that is due to the uh, endoskeleton of the calcareous ossicles here this small twist organ system they are triploblastic they are coelomate everything is fine but here you have a small twist it should be ideally bilateral symmetry because from your platyhelminthes everything is bilateral symmetry all the higher fire but the small twist is that the larva is bilateral symmetry but the adult is radial symmetry it is like going back in development right because all the phyla is continuously having bilateral symmetry but here only the larva is having bilateral symmetry so uh, sorry ah uh -huh. and the adult is having radial symmetry so why is that so this is the nature and this type of development is called as retrograde development for example today if i sing 90 songs the theme is retro theme right so when similarly something is going back in development it is retrograde development okay so just like your sponges have a water canal system they have a water vascular system right so all that you have to remember in echinodermata the symmetry is reversed right so this is how they look like so the next thing is your hemichordata they are worm like marine animals so they are organ system they are bilateral triploblastic coelomate they are also segmented that is they have an anterior proboscis collar and trunk their circulatory system is open type so orthopods and hemichordata have open type circulatory system the excretion is through proboscis gland right so now we are moving into chordata so the difference between chordates and non chordates as given in your ncrt so all the tabular columns are important as long as it makes sense like your notochord is present here here it is absent the heart in chordates is ventral here it is dorsal so a post anal trail is present so here it is absent all that right so how it is divided so your phylum chordata has subphyla so these three are the subphyla they are not class but they are subphyla so this is a subphyla that is called as urochordata or tunicata this is a subphyla that is cephalochordata or vertebrata this is separate that is separate so these two are called as protochordates because they were formed initially so what is the difference between urochordates and cephalochordates cephalo means head when the notochord is present from the head to tail it is cephalochordates when it is present only in the larval tail it is urochordates so that is the basic difference between those two so under those which have no jaws right so you have this cyclostoma so they have no jaws right so they have no jaws so they have no scales and fins so three things are absent here no jaws no scales no fins right but what do they have they have gill slits they have a vertebral column the circulatory system is closed type and they show what is called as spawning spawning is migration from fresh water to your, from your marine water to your fresh water all right yes so next one is your chondrocytes so these are the ones that have your scales that have your jaws they have jaws and scales right the one that has jaws and limbs are different the one that has jaws and scales are different the first class is chondrocytes so you should remember chondrocytes have cartilaginous endoskeleton so chondrocytes cartilaginous endoskeleton cc and they have placoid scales 
what type of clay scales placoid scales so remember cp that is carrier point so chondrites are cartilaginous because it is c and they have placoid scales okay so they have gill slits right but the gill slits do not have a cover one more thing that you should remember about chondrites is that they have no air bladder if they have no air bladder they will they will sink right so they have to keep floating always right fine so these are the examples your scordillion pristis charcodon and your trigon hi trisha i hope you're doing good and thank you for joining my session the next one is your osteocytes right so here you should understand osteocytes o is made up of bony endoskeleton right and here they have your cycloid or tenoid scales so it is o b c remember this way so o b c is a particular category right so o for your osteocytes b for bony and c for cycloid right yes tricks are very interesting all right so they have air bladder so they can regulate buoyancy they have a cover for their gills that is operculum just like you have a phone cover so here that cover is operculum right so next we go to okay so you have the different varieties of them so the one that you eat the edible fishes are your osteocytes fine they can be in the aquarium also they can be in the marine water also so coming to those who have jaws as well as limbs right so you have class amphibia so what you have to do in amphibia you have to remember is the skin is moist without scale they have tympanum that is your eardrum they have what is called as cochlea and they are oviparous that is like an lay eggs so you have a lot of examples the next one is reptiles in reptiles you have to remember they have dry cornified skin so if you see the uh, skin of the cock a crocodile it will be like this so they are dead keratin cells the thick one is the dead keratin cells and these structures are the scutes right so this is what you have to remember in reptilia these are your examples coming to birds so birds have wings and beak these are the two identifying structures mostly they are they are dry without glands but they have an oil gland at the base so they have an air cavity like cockroach they have a crop and a gizzard right they are the first one which are warm blooded but they lay eggs we are also warm blooded but they are warm blooded but they are egg laying right crocodile reminds me of bitter gar exactly exactly you are right so that is how it looks right so whenever i touch the bitter gar also it, yeah it feels the same yes trisha we have the same frequency so these are the examples and then coming to class mammalia the last one so you have to understand mammals are present everywhere right they fly they are also present in the oceans right so what is the most unique feature they have the milk producing gland that is the mammary gland and they possess body hair these are the two distinct things right so apart from that you should remember so when i say mammals are present in the water so that includes your dolphins and when i say they can fly it is your bats right so these are some of the examples right so examples are equally important so this is ch this chapter is having high weightage because otherwise you guys will never study right and you have to remember the examples to some extent okay crop for to store food and gizzard for digestion yes you are absolutely right so this is in cockroach okay w yes so with this we come to the end of this quick revision of your animal kingdom so was it really easy so quickly i glimpse through all that you have to revise and all that you have to remember so coming to this videos i hope i have told you already twice but it's my humble request for you to watch this information about heat box the link to this video is given in the description below so you can please check that and watch this video the second half of the video i would have spoken so today monkey pox is spreading and the world health the organization has declared as a warning so it's good that and it's good and cautious for you to know what it is okay yes and again it's an announcement if you want to know what is the quota atmosphere like so you are cordially invited on 8th of june to so 
sorry to cp tower and we have the motivational guru uh, mr pramod maheshwari talking about the 6.5 mantras so i would say please uh, use this opportunity and be here yeah so finally if you love my lecture so please do like share and subscribe and tomorrow for a change we are not meeting at 5:30 we are meeting at 11:30 am tomorrow in the morning we are going to have a menti quiz so the menti quiz syllabus is four chapters living world biological classification plant kingdom and animal kingdom the four chapters that i have devised over this way so that is your syllabus for your menti quiz and make sure you stay tuned right so until tomorrow at 11:30 am so this is me signing off so please take care and stay tuned bye thank you